Welcome back again. My name is Dan Woolridge. This is the Cross Life Join channel, and this is the first in a series on water baptism, water baptism, and the Word of God. Water baptism in Christianity is sometimes called the water that divides. And in this series, we're going to look and see what the scriptures actually teach and say about being baptized in water. Firstly, if you have been baptized in water as a repentant believer, as someone who's come to know Jesus Christ as your savior, as someone who wants to be a disciple of Jesus, and uh, as somebody who's followed him uh, through the waters of baptism, then I praise God for you, because like Romans chapter 6, Paul says, God be thanked that you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine that was delivered unto you. And let's praise God for every time the doctrine and teaching of the scriptures is faithfully delivered down through the centuries. Sometimes we forget that this gospel has been preached and spread for some 2,000 years. We look at our own short lifespan, but the word of God has been steadily going out for 2,000 years, proclaiming the same message not changing at all, not altering because of culture, language, skin color, or any other type of orientation or change, the Word of God has remained constant. Oh yes, the fables, the traditions of men, the teachings of mankind mixed in with the truth has changed and come and gone and gone and uh, got lighter or darker depending on the uh, time frame that those teachings have been spread in. But this has always been the case. But it's also always been the case that the witness of the Word of God has always been available. Even in Christianity's darkest hours, in the Dark Ages, the Word of God was still around the voice of the spirit and the word was still heard in the land water baptism as somebody who is able to respond in faith to the gospel water baptism by full immersion uh, as somebody who follows Christ has always been taught right the way through the history of the church. And today we're going to go on a road trip through the New Testament. We're going to tour the New Testament as the Word of God expands, this is the resurrection of Christ, the message of Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection, the gospel as we understand it, as it spreads through the land, starting at Jerusalem, through uh, Judea and Samaria, and even to the uttermost parts of the world, we're going to track that record uh, within the pages of the New Testament and see the place that water baptism plays within this unfolding story. Praise the Lord. Because Jesus Christ has never changed, and what he's taught has never changed, and he's always and always will be the same. So the question then is, is water baptism for you today? Is it for you as an adult, uh, as somebody responsible for, for your actions, as somebody who 
has to give an account. In fact, uh, do you know what the Bible teaches? What the Word of God actually says? Have you read the Scriptures for yourself? It's so important to read the Scriptures for yourself and not just rely on what other people tell you that the Bible says. Read the Scriptures for yourself. When you read the scriptures for yourself, you come to a decision to be made. Does God want you to be baptized in water by full immersion? Does the word of God instruct you, even command you, as a follower of Jesus Christ, to be baptized in water? What is the witness of the scriptures? What is the witness of the Holy Spirit in your heart and conscience? Does God lead all of his children to be baptized in water? What does the Word of God say about this? And once you find out what the Word of God says about this, what does the Father expect your informed decision to be? Should you be baptized in water? And particularly baptized by full immersion in water. So is water baptism part of the gospel message? Now, in this first session, I'm not going to be looking at uh, things like full immersion. I just want us to take a trip through the New Testament scriptures, which also coincides with the spreading of the gospel from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world, earth, and actually see whether they all uh, submitted themselves happily and gladly to being baptized in water. In other words, is water baptism practiced throughout the New Testament? That's what this session endeavors to answer. And it answers it by simply looking at the record of the Word of God. We're going to look at the people and the places in the New Testament where water baptisms occurred. First of all, let's start with Peter preaching on the day of Pentecost. The Spirit of God falls down. Peter preaches the first message to the Christian church. It's a message that lifts up Jesus Christ as being the answer and the saviour of the world. It also points out that the Messiah, the saviour of the world, had been crucified but had risen again. And so the people listening, they call out and uh, shocked and stunned uh, by this declaration, and they call out to Peter and ask him, what should they do? If this is true, what should they do? And this is what Peter replies in this message. You can read it for yourself in Acts chapter 2, 38 to 41. And uh, let's read it together. I'll read it out loud. You follow along. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and unto and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. 
and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Well, that's the first gospel message. That's the first question. And this is the first reply. And this is the first response. They that gladly received his word were baptized. They were baptized in water. They were baptized by full immersion. They gladly received the word and about 3,000 souls get saved because they believed and they repented and they followed through in obedience to the word of God and gladly became baptized in water. That's a good foundation. That's a good start. If the head is well, the body is well. If the head is sick, the body is sick. This is the start. This is the great start. This is the church. This is the gospel. This is the full gospel that the apostles taught and lived and spread. And they got it directly from the Lord Jesus Christ. It's his gospel it's full, it's complete. It should never have matters taken from it or matters added to it. It's the simple, pure, full gospel. What baptism shows that a person is committing him or herself fully to follow the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord? We'll see that Jesus commanded his followers to follow him, commanded his followers to be baptized and to baptize in water. Water baptism always comes after repentance and faith. Repentance is being sorry for and turning away from sin, the wrong things that you know that you've done. You've been gifted by God with a conscience that has developed in your life. You know the difference between right and wrong. And then the entrance of God's word brings light. The entrance of God's word heightens your conscience. The word of God and the spirit of God appeal to your conscience. And you turn to God for relief. for forgiveness, for acceptance. You turn to God so that you can become his child and God the Father can be your father. And the only way that this doorway is open, the only path that is open for this, is Jesus Christ, the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> and so... You believe on who Jesus is, that he's the son of the living God, that he died on the cross of Calvary and paid the price for our sins. He didn't sin himself. He's our substitute, as it were. God gives us the faith and we turn to him and repent in sorrow asking for forgiveness in faith, to follow him and to be his child and to walk in the ways of the word of God. So water baptism always comes after repentance and faith. Water baptism doesn't save you without true repentance and without true faith. Water baptism is an indication or a step that you, hallelujah, believe that Jesus Christ is your saviour and that you submit yourself to him as, your, as his disciple as you follow him. What is Christian faith? Well, faith is believing who Jesus is, what he says, what he's done, what he's doing now, what he will do, everything about the Son of God, 
the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You know, faith is some, something that, 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 that uh, we, uh, mankind, have. I mean, we have hope and faith. Some people use their faith to gain position or satisfaction or wealth. But God originally gave us faith so that we could trust him, believe in him, turn to him and come to him. That's the best use of faith. Hallelujah. It's the gift of God. He's given it to all men have the measure of faith. And it's primarily given so that you can turn to God. You can hope in God and that hope can be realized as you get to know Jesus Christ. Peter says in Acts 2.38, Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you. There were no exceptions here. Every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Repent and be baptized, every one of you. Every one of them had to repent. Anybody who says that they've become a Christian without repenting and turning away from their sin hasn't become a Christian. You might have joined a club, you might have joined a church, you might be now in some social group that you like to hang out with, but you haven't really become a Christian. You might be hanging out with Christians, but you haven't become a Christian. The only way to become a Christian, to become born again, is to repent. And if you truly repent and believe in Jesus, you'll do and follow him. And Peter said, when they said to him, what shall we do? What shall we do? They didn't say, what shall we think? Or where, what shall we, you know, consider? They said, what shall we do? They were, they were convicted. And he said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Not in the name of a church, not in the name of your best friend, not in the name of your family, hallelujah, but in the name of Jesus Christ. So your sins can be remitted, removed, hallelujah, satisfied and forgiven. And so that you now are eligible to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, God's abiding presence. He virtually said to them, turn back to God. When Peter preached this message, most of the people were Jews there, or proselyte Jews that had come from all over the world, actually, along those Roman roads, you know. Rome, the empire, made it travel relatively easy. And people came from all over the empire, Jews and proselyte Jews, back uh, for Passover and for the feast, and they're there and they hear this. The Bible says that they heard it. All, all in their own language. And they're called to turn back to God, turn from their sin, forsake their sin, leave their old life, hallelujah, and follow Jesus. You know, if you're not prepared to do that, uh, you know, otherwise water baptism is just a farce. It's a joke if you don't mean it. If they weren't prepared to repent and believe, there's no point there's, and take Jesus as your Lord and Saviour. There's no point in getting baptised in water. It just makes you wet. doesn't do anything for you. It's not a secret initiation. It's the outward manifestation of a sign that you are prepared to live in obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ who manifests himself through his spirit and his word. The gospel. It shows that now there's been a desire deep within you to stand up for Jesus, to serve God. If you don't want to serve God, if you don't want to obey God, if you don't want to follow 
God, if you don't want to submit to his word and his spirit, well, don't get baptized. It's all right. You know, God does not just want the outward form of water baptism. He wants your heart. But if he has your heart, he has everything about you. Look at the Apostle Paul because he gets converted and then he gets baptized in water. Paul repented and had faith and then he was baptized in water like everybody else in the New Testament. You can't find a single case in the New Testament where people were not baptized by, in water as adults, immersed in the water because of what water baptism stands for. You've got to be buried, as it were, and then raised up again because Jesus' baptism is not just purely a baptism of repentance. It's a baptism of repentance plus the power of the resurrection. Hallelujah. Born again. Look at Acts 22, 12 to 16. This is how Paul gets saved. And one Ananias, a devout man according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, came unto me and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. And the same hour I looked upon him. And he said, The God of our fathers hath chosen thee, that thou shouldest know his will, and see that just one, and shouldest hear the voice of his mouth. For thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. And now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. You know, Ananias didn't want to go and see Paul. And the Lord had to speak to him. And the Lord told him that Paul would have a lot of buffeting going on in his life and face a lot of trials and would suffer for the, the Lord's namesake. And the Lord sent Ananias there with this message. And the message included the Great Commission, and in particular uh, the ministry that God had dis given Paul, but it was an expansion of the Great Commission that we're all given to speak and say and witness to those things that we've seen and heard and we've done. And in the midst of it, Paul himself is told to get baptized in water and he gladly receives it and he is baptized in water. Now we're going to come to many accounts of Christians who get baptized in water in the first church. And there are lots of them, but we're going to do it as though we were on a road trip. We're going to visit the towns and the places and the peoples and the families and, as it were, take a bird's eye view through the lens of the word of God and see if they gladly received his word by being baptized in water. So we should look at them. First of all, the Samaritans. Acts chapter 8, 9 to 13. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that he was some great one, to whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is is the great power of God. And to him they had regard, 
because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning a kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and the signs which were done. So they all get baptized in water. The gospel that Philip preached included faith and repentance and water baptism, all in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's go to the Ethiopian. You know the Ethiopian eunuch? It's in Acts chapter 8, 35 to 38. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came to a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Philip preaches the gospel. The gospel is to repent and to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel is to believe that Jesus Christ has died for you, that he is the Lord, he rose again from the dead, and he's called his disciples to follow him, to repent and to be baptized in water. As they're driving along, the eunuch sees some water. And he immediately says, why, what's hindering me getting baptized? So Philip starts in Isaiah and preaches Jesus. Who he is, what he's done, what he did, what his message is, what his death and burial and resurrection is all about, what our response to it should be, how to follow him, and what to do. And the eunuch wants it all. Hallelujah. Praise his name. So he believes, he repents, and he goes down into the water with Philip, and he becomes baptized. Let's look at Cornelius and his household. Well, the eunuch was definitely somebody from another country. Cornelius and his household were definitely not Jews, not even Samaritans. So we've gone from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and we're moving out into the uttermost parts of the world. Acts chapter 10, verse 43 to 48. To give him all, to him, give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. And while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them that heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, 
Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord, and they prayed, then prayed they him to tarry certain days. This was a milestone. This was the gospel preached. This was the gospel received by Gentiles. And they received the Holy Spirit with speaking in tongues. And Peter turns to them and commands them that they be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Water baptism in the Bible is definitely a command. It comes straight from the Word of God. It comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're going to follow him, then follow him through the waters of baptism. Let's look at the jailer and his household in Acts 16, 30 to 34. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized, he and all his straight way. And when he brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all of his house. The jailer hears the gospel about Jesus Christ being the only way, dying on the cross, being buried, raising again on the third day, calling people to come to him, to repent of their sins, to follow him, and to follow him also through the waters of baptism. And here is the record. This is what happened. Praise the Lord. And this is what he did. He was baptized and his household. And he rejoiced, believing in God. It's something to rejoice about. When you get baptized in water, it's a wonderful rejoicing, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. It is an experience. Yes, it is. It's a joy. It's a blessing. It is a washing. It's not just an outward washing. There's a release. There's a wonder. There's a glory. Hallelujah. Because you... Praise God, are believing and following the one who is invisible, Jesus Christ. He said, blessed are they that believe on me, not having seen me. And if you believe on Jesus, believe his word, believe what he says, believe what he calls for you to do. We don't like terms like command and obey these days. I don't know why, but we just don't. But God commands and we obey. Hallelujah. That's the scripture. The obedience of the gospel. Praise his name. Let's look at Lydia, a businesswoman and a family in Acts chapter 16, uh, 14 and 15. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thracia, Thyatira, which worshipped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized in her household, she besought us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and abide there. And she constrained us. She gets baptized in water and a household. 
And she says, if you've judged me to be faithful to the Lord. If you want to be faithful to the Lord, follow the Lord. Water baptism was part of the gospel that was preached to this business lady. She attended, listened. Now listen, you can't just come to God because you want to, as it were. God has to open our hearts. Now he wants everybody to come. He does. He's not willing that any should perish. And as you start to turn towards him, he, as it were, turns towards you. He draws you. And as you respond to his drawing, he opens your heart so that you become attentive, you listen. You have a hunger to follow, to agree, to obey, to believe, hallelujah, to repent and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And water baptism is pleasing in his sight. Look at Crispus. He is a ruler of the synagogue, a well-entrenched uh, Jew. And in Acts 18.8, we find his story. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all of his house, and many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed and were baptized. The gospel preached to them included water baptism. The gospel preached to them included who Jesus is, that he's the Son of God, hallelujah, that he's born of a virgin, that he died on the cross for our sins. He didn't die for his own sin. There was no reason. He was not under the sentence of death because of his own behavior. He rose again from the dead on the third day. He carried away the sins of the world. And God the Father said that those who call upon his name will be saved. Those who repent and come to him will be saved. Those that follow him as, as, his, as their Lord and Master and do those things that he says, hallelujah, will be saved. And so it is. They believed and they were baptized. Glory to God. If you believed in the early church, you got baptized in water. The two were not separated. They've only become separated because the doctrines of man and the traditions of mankind. They've only become separated because it's been suggested that an infant can be baptized by having water sprinkled on them. That's a tradition of men. That's not in the word of God. The preaching of the gospel and water baptism in the New Testament are tied together. Let's look at the believers at Ephesus. This is Paul goes to Ephesus. Acts 19, 1 to 5. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coasts, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much heard as whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him whom should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now these were disciples. They had John's baptism, which was a baptism, a water baptism unto repentance. But Jesus' baptism is not only repentance, but also unto resurrection. I'll deal with this in a later session.
the difference between John's baptism and Jesus' baptism. But the point is, as soon as they heard about what Jesus had to say, they followed Jesus and they were baptised in his name. So what about you? Are you ready to follow the Lord Jesus through the waters of baptism? Are you ready as a believer in Jesus, as someone who confesses and witnesses about him and to him, that you've come to the Lord, that you've been saved, that you've been born again, that you've been redeemed, that you know your sins are forgiven, you know that your home is in heaven, hallelujah, you know that you stand before the Lord, cleansed, hallelujah, and made anew, Will you submit to the Lord Jesus in his teachings that are clearly shown through the scriptures? And will you follow the Lord Jesus through the waters of baptism? Jesus made it abundantly clear in Matthew 28, 19 to 20. He spoke to his disciples and he said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Now listen, we haven't got to the end of the world yet, have we? No. Jesus is still with us, isn't he? Yes. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, isn't he? Yes. The things that he taught then, he teaches now, doesn't he? Yes. He hasn't changed his message to suit our age or time, our culture, our national beliefs. Has he? No, he hasn't. He says exactly the same today as he said back then. And he said to his disciples, go teach all nations, that's everybody, regardless of their nationality, their culture, their tribe, their family, their skin color, their language, or anything else about them. If they're part of mankind, if they're people, teach them. Teach them about me, about who I am, about why God in his love sent me, what my mission is, what I've done, what I'm doing, how that my death and burial and resurrection allows uh, for God the Father to forgive all those who believe and repent, who want to follow me and baptize them, teach them. He said, I want you to teach them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. The word observe doesn't mean look at and think about. It means to do. Do the things that I've commanded you, of which water baptism is there. Christianity is a do thing. It's not a think thing. You can't think righteousness and not do it. Oh, I know you can think iniquity and not do it and still be found guilty. You can lust after a woman in your heart and your mind and your imagination, not actually go out and do it, and you'll be found guilty. But you cannot think righteousness in your heart and mind and imagine yourself doing it and not actually carry through and do it. It doesn't count if you just imagine it or you just think it or you think the concept's wonderful. You've got to actually do it. Christianity is hands-on. Christianity is worked out. It is not lived within the secret temple of your thoughts. It's lived out, hallelujah, in the actions of your body, your soul, and your spirit in a three-dimensional world on a timeline. Hallelujah. We come into this world. We live on this world. And eventually we're going to leave it one way or another. And during that time that we are living on this world, glory to God, we get an opportunity to believe in Jesus, to repent of our sins, to follow him and get baptized in water.
praise his mighty blessed name, even to the end of the world. I don't mind if you think that your Bible says end of the age, it's end of the world, and the world has not ended yet. So what about you? Will you be baptized in water in the name of Jesus, who told us to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Are you ready to follow the Lord Jesus through the waters of baptism? You're the only one who can answer. You have to give an answer according to your conscience, and your conscience should be guided and led and inspired and instructed from the simple scriptures that haven't changed in 2,000 years. The message has stayed the same. It's recorded. You know, it cost martyr's blood and a lot of standing for truth so that you could get a pure Bible delivered into your hands today. You can still find pure Bibles. Read the scriptures for yourself. As we go through this series, I'm going to keep coming back to the scriptures, the word of God. And yes, it is the King James Bible that I'm reading from. It's sound, it's stable, it's steadfast, it's pure, it's simple, it's tried, it's tested. It is the word of God in English. Don't be fooled. Don't let yourself become bewitched to believe another gospel. There is this strong record running through the word of God establishing that water baptism is part of our Christian faith and expression. I hope as you join me on this journey, and yes, this is a journey, we're all on our own path, but we should be all on the same road. <laughs> that is following Jesus, listening to what he's got to say, doing the things that he taught his disciples to do, which they went forward and taught others to do. And then confirmed and, and backed up by the scriptures. Praise God. And as you move through these sessions, looking at the scriptures, let a conviction grow in your heart that comes from the heart of God, that you become someone who worships the Lord and follows the Lord with all of your heart, soul, mind and strength. Praise God. Praise God for his word. Praise God for everybody who's received the word of God with gladness and is happily following Jesus and putting their trust in him. And I thank God for you. I thank God that you know the Lord. I thank God that you're living for him. Praise God, every grain of sand, hallelujah. Every one of us, glory to God, and live for the glory of God and do those things that are honorable in his sight and please him, glory to God, because he's in us. He is our awakening. He is our enabling. He's our life force, glory to God. Because of him, we can live. Because of him, we can walk. Amen. Once again, this is Dan Waldridge. If you've enjoyed this and you think that other people, you know, could benefit from hearing this, then uh, subscribe, like, and don't forget, as they say these days, ring the bell. If this is on YouTube, you've got to subscribe and you've got to tick and ring the bell. And then you'll be notified as this series continues. And as I post updates, you'll get to hear about them. I'd love to hear from you. Please welcome comments. If you've got questions, I do my best to answer them or point you in a direction where you can uh, look further. But let us who are of the day, let us rejoice. Let's have a hunger for righteousness. Let's have a hunger to please God. And let's uh, go forward in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> 
in his love and his joy, his power and his blessing. God bless you and keep you. Amen and amen. Praise his mighty, blessed, glorious name, Lord Jesus.